Now we know, because we're actually in 3D vectors, right? What this is really shorthand for is, um, for example, you've got some x, some y, some z, right? And what they're equal to is some other vector, some arbitrary vector, right? So I guess maybe I call this x1, y1, z1, right? Plus some real multiple of another vector, right? Uh, lambda, and then I've got x2, y2, z2, okay? So the reason why this works, the reason why this works and this didn't work is because in fact, this is shorthand for three equations, what we call three parametric equations, right? This one equation has tied inside it x equals, and then I, I look at all of the x parts, right? I compare all those x components because they don't interact, they're orthogonal to the y and z, so I can treat them separately, right? x equals x1 plus lambda x2. y equals y1 plus lambda y2. z equals z1 plus lambda z2. These are what we call the parametric equations. And the specific parameter that you use... Actually, can I just ask, because um, this would usually sit into extension one, have you been introduced formally to the language of the parameter? Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. You, you may be familiar with it from the unit circle, for example. Um, bless you. Um, on the unit circle, right, we would say, yeah, you can give me a Cartesian equation for this, x squared plus y squared equals one. But you can also say, well, I can describe every point, not just in terms of an x and a y, I can term, describe it in terms of a single number, the angle of rotation, and that angle is called the parameter. Give me a theta, and I'll tell you where you are in the circle. Here, give me a lambda, and I'll tell you where you are in the line. Does that make sense? Give me a lambda equals zero, bam, there I am on A. Give me a lambda of one, there I am on B. Uh, give me a lambda of a half, I'm the midpoint, et cetera, et cetera. Does this make sense? So we shouldn't be that surprised that this here didn't work to give us a line because it was a vastly underpowered tool. You really need three equations, which mathematicians, mathematicians being lazy, they combine into one and we write it in this very succinct way. Does that make sense? Okay, let's see if we can do an example together of finding the equation of um, some arbitrary set of points that's together. I've got some coordinates ready here. I just need to find where I hit them. Uh, okay, here's my example. I'm gonna give you an A and a B, and uh, we're gonna see if we can find the vector equation of the line that passes through these two points. So here's my example A. Let's go with negative one, two, negative four. And then for B, I'm gonna go three, negative two, negative three. Now, I'm not going to give you too much of a leg up into this. I think you have enough geometric reasoning. You've got to work out how to get from one to here and then sort of along the line as it were. See if you can work out off of what I've drawn here what the vector equation of this line is going to look like. I'll give you a few minutes. If you get what you think is an answer, call me over. If you're beating your head against the wall, also signal to me, but I will show it to everyone. Okay? Off you go. Let's have a play with this. Now, what I'm going to do, in fact, is hopefully show you two ways to do this, just to confirm we're doing this right. So, in order to get the vector equation of line AB, right, at least in the scheme that I've shown you, I need to know what U is, I need to know what V is, and lambda is just kind of a... Uh, yeah, it's any number, right? So just, I just leave that pronumeral, okay? Now you can see here, I've stated that u is O A, to get from the origin up to A, right? So in this case, because you've just been given the coordinates of A, it is not difficult to write um, the vector O A, which I'm labeling as little u, the x and the y and the z of this vector correspond to the x and the y and the z of the coordinates. Is that okay? So hopefully without too much trouble we were okay to write down this part here, yes? Now, only a little bit of extra work is required to do V. V is AB, right? So I've called this AB. How do I determine the vector that gets me from A to B? 
OB minus OA. We could do a simple vector diagram here to show us this, right? But you've done this enough times, you're like, I can just go straight, I don't need to draw the diagram, I know what's going on. I can just think about, well, what will I do to A for each of these x, y, and z's to get them to B? You could even just state it, right? From negative one, what do you do to have to get to three? You add four, right? From two, what do you have to do to get to negative two? You subtract four. And then from negative four to negative three, just be careful with the signs, you add one. So that's V. You okay with that? So therefore, this is, that was the hardest part of the work. The vector equation is, you start with U, you add some multiple of V. Done. That wasn't too hard, was it? Now, as promised, I want to show you another way to do this because this is not the only way to state the vector equation. There were some assumptions built into this, right, that don't have to be used. I said go from O to A, and by the way, this has a special name, so we should label it together. Going from O to A, it sort of gets you onto the line, right? It gets you in position, as it were. So this initial vector here is called the position vector. And sometimes the question will ask, find the position vector, this is what they mean. Get me onto the line. And then they say, well, you've got this vector here, which is not about position, it's about well, which way is the line facing, which way is it going? In other words, which direction do you point from the position? So therefore, a natural name for it would be? Okay. Now, the, the traditional name is direction vector. I can see why I think a displacement vector is kind of a um, related idea. But we've used displacement vector elsewhere in our, in our thinking, right? Um, so this is what they generally call it. Direction, because you're here looking in what direction? Okay? Now, think about this with me. For line AB, is there not an infinite series of choices for our position vector? Anything on AB could be our position vector, right? And there's at least one other option that I could use instead of A, like easily. I could just use B. B. Do you agree? So let's just quickly jot down, right? If I were to do a different position vector, like say, uh, what is it? 3, negative 2, negative 3, right? I'm still going to have some multiple of, but it'll be a different direction vector if I use this scheme. I go from B to A, right? So I could go ahead, I can work out what BA is, but guess what? Mathematicians, we love being lazy, don't we? Do I really have to work out what BA is? Because BA is just minus AB, right? So because this captures every possible real number, I've already got a suitable direction vector, right? Do you agree? Because what I've got here is I'm now going to B, and I've already got V. It's, it's there. It's, I'm still on the line. And every other multiple of V will still be on the line, just different start point. Does that make sense? So just like with, in the 2D world, in Cartesian equations, there's an infinite variety of different ways to write the equation of the same line. Same deal for vector equations of lines. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me hit pause there. We're not done with vector equations of lines. There's more stuff to learn. Um, probably the only thing to highlight before you get going on the exercise is, this is very similar, is it not, to when you thought about just Cartesian equations of lines in 2D. We would normally write y equals, say, mx plus b. Right? That's a very common way to write it. But just for reasons that I hope will become clear in about 10 seconds, I'm going to write it backwards. Can you see why this feels or should feel a lot like the vector equation of a line we've got? Because what are you doing, right? It's like go to a place, some location, some position, and then tell me which direction I should face. Is this a steep line? Is it shallow? Is it horizontal? Etc. Right? So this is kind of like your position and this is kind of your direction. Same deal, same principle. So if I asked you, Hey, I've got two lines. I've got their vector equations. Can you tell me whether these lines are parallel or not? Which part of this would you care about? Just the direction vector. I didn't care about where it's positioned, it's just the direction. What about if I wanted to know where the two lines were perpendicular? What would I do? I would look at the direction vectors, because they tell me where it's facing, and I want a dot product of Zero, because that means they're exactly orthogonal to each other. Does that make sense? So you have all the pieces there, right? But you just need to fit them together in the questions.